Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about anaerobic cellular respiration, or cellular respiration without oxygen. To understand anaerobic, you must first understand aerobic respiration. And so if these terms don't make sense to you, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, and if you don't even know what a mitochondria is, you may want to go watch one of my videos on that, and I'll put a video link right up here. Um, but what is anaerobic cellular respiration? That's when we don't have oxygen or we don't have a mitochondria present. And so let's get rid of those. And so what is anaerobic respiration? It's really just glycolysis and then a new process called fermentation. And so let's dig in a little bit deeper. And so this is all the steps of cellular respiration. Remember we began with glucose. In glycolysis we break that down into pyruvate. How much energy do we get from that? We get 2 ATP. Now we put in some ATP, but we net a total of 2 ATP. What happens to the pyruvate? It's going to go into the mitochondria. It enters into the Krebs cycle after it's converted to acetyl CoA. We give off all that carbon as carbon dioxide, and we make another 2 ATP. And so we haven't released that much energy yet. Where'd the energy go? It's stored in NAD and FAD. They're going to transfer their electrons through the electron transport chain. Eventually those electrons go to oxygen with the formation of water and we're going to make most of our ATP here. And so we're going to make somewhere between 32 and 34 ATP. And so we net around 38, but there's controversy. It's probably not as much as that. But how could we break this process? Well, we could break this process, number one, if we didn't have any glucose, but we usually have enough food inside our body. But we could break this in two ways. We could get rid of the mitochondria, so if there was a toxin that destroyed the, the uh, mitochondria, for example, or if we just didn't have enough mitochondria present, or if we didn't have oxygen. Remember, oxygen's right here at the end. It's receiving those electrons. It's the final electron acceptor. And if we don't have that, the whole thing kind of backs up. And so we're out of luck. And we would be out of luck if it weren't for anaerobic respiration. If you want to feel what anaerobic respiration feels like, just hold your breath for a while. You're going to run out of oxygen, you can't make ATP, and you're going to get in some serious trouble very, very quickly. And so what is the problem? Why are you feeling that pain? Well, it really boils down to glycolysis. And so in glycolysis, we're taking glucose and we're breaking it down into pyruvate. Remember, we net 2 ATP. Where did that energy go? It's being converted to NAD. A lot of it is converted to NAD. And so NAD is going to be reduced, remember. It's going to pick up electrons. But pretty soon, all of that NAD is full. There's no electrons that can be donated it, to it because it's now all at NADH, or reduced NAD+. And so that's where we get stuck. And where are we going to come up against this wall if we don't have oxygen or if we don't have mitochondria? And so what is our solution to that? Well, through evolution, we've come up with two solutions to this. We have lactic acid fermentation, and we have alcoholic fermentation. So first you have to do glycolysis, but after that, in animals and bacteria, they do what's called lactic acid fermentation. And so in a sloth, they don't move that fast, but maybe in you when you're sprinting, or in bacteria when they're making yogurt, they can do another process after glycolysis, and what that does is allows us to keep doing glycolysis over and over again. And in alcoholic fermentation, they do that uh, by actually converting it to ethyl alcohol. So let's go through those specifically. Again, here's where we're stuck. We've gone through glucose or glycolysis, we've made pyruvate, but now we have all of this NADH, and there's no way that we can keep going through glycolysis because all of it's filled. And so in lactic acid fermentation, what happens is this pyruvate is converted further into lactate. And sometimes you've maybe heard of that called lactic acid. What happens with the formation of lactic acid? Well, we're not making any ATP, but those electrons can now be converted from NADH, and it can be transferred to lactate. What does that do? It frees up this NAD plus to go back and pick up more electrons again. And so what we can do is through this process, we can go through glycolysis over and over and over and over again. And so we can make ATP every time we do that. Now we're not going to get all that ATP that we would if we went all the way through um, Krebs cycle electron transport chain, but we can still make quite a bit of energy. Now this is a picture over here of my son. He is a cross country skier. And so in this picture right here, he's on a treadmill, he's skiing. And this is a uh, test to, to calculate VO2 max, to figure out how efficient you are at using oxygen. But it also is going to measure your lactate threshold. It's going to measure the amount of uh, how much exercise you have to do before lactic acid builds up in your muscles in an appreciable amount. And so if you are exercising really, really quickly, you get a certain amount of energy through um, 
cellular respiration. But to, if you go faster and faster and faster, eventually your body will also add on top of that this lactate acid fermentation. And if you've ever run, for example, a 400 meter dash or sprinted, that pain you feel in your muscles is a buildup of this lactate in your muscles. And so eventually, that's not even enough. And you're eventually going to just have to stop running or stop competing because it's too painful. Uh, and that's that buildup inside your muscles. And so what happens is after you're done, then you have to go through and breathe a lot and then use oxygen and cellular respiration to break down that lactate. But it does give us kind of like a turbo boost to go on top of that regular cellular respiration. Bacteria do the same thing. Uh, if you were to put them in milk, for example, uh, lactobacillus bacteria will go through lactic acid fermentation and that acid breaks down the proteins in the milk and makes yogurt. And so that's one way that we can survive when we don't have oxygen, lactic acid fermentation. Remember, it still includes glycolysis, but it's followed by this lactic acid fermentation so we can go through that process again. Now we also see the same thing in alcoholic fermentation. And so where would we see that? That's going to be in things like yeast. And so what are they doing? They're breaking down glucose into pyruvate, but again they're stuck. And so, for example, if we put a little bit of yeast and some grain and sugar in this bottle, they're going to start to do cellular respiration, just like we do. But eventually, they're going to run out of oxygen. Okay, no oxygen can get in this container. Only gas can get out. And so eventually, they're stuck. And they would be stuck if they couldn't do fermentation. What are they going to do? They're going to convert that pyruvate into ethyl alcohol. And that's the alcohol that we'd find in beer and wine. Now if you look at pyruvate and ethyl alcohol, we're missing a carbon here. And the reason why is that that carbon is going to go towards carbon dioxide. That's why we'd have a buildup of this carbon dioxide in beer or champagne, for example. What is that doing though? Again, it's the same thing. It's picking up electrons from NADH and that's producing more of this NAD+, and so we can go through that process of glycolysis over and over and over again. And so if we're looking at yeast inside here, now they'll do alcoholic fermentation. And they'll do that until they have consumed, uh, built up too much of this ethyl alcohol and then it'll eventually poison them. And so we've known this for a long period of time. And so fermentation has been going on for years and years and years. The Egyptians used to make beer using fermentation um, and we do it today as well. And so what do you need? All you do is put a little bit of grain in there, some sugar, water, and some yeast. If you don't give them oxygen, eventually they're going to convert to alcoholic fermentation. And they'll do that until the level of alcohol inside there is going to kill the yeast. They settle to the bottom and then we have alcohol. And so that's anaerobic respiration. What does it do? It allows us to keep going if we have no oxygen or no mitochondria present. It only lasts for a certain period of time and then we're out of luck. Uh, and I hope that was helpful.